We've done some basic hardtail skills videos before, but we've taken up a level today, Blake. Yeah, we are. This is advanced hardtail skills. before we get into the nitty gritty, right, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification because you get notified every time we put a video out. We do 365 videos. That's one every single day of the year. Don't forget to do that. Now we can carry on. All right, we're on the Oakley Trail here at Dubby Bike Park and there's some big features on this trail. Starting off with this big drop off, or should I say I'm on the smaller side, see this one. Yeah, it's got another five and a half feet on this one and you can do really big stuff on hardtails i guess we've kind of showed that in the past a little bit we've ridden uh, those jumps at vision line you can do really big stuff the sort of margin for error i feel is much smaller though with hardtail you've got to nail the landings on this drop off there is a really nice down slope actually you can see at the top it's nice and steep but i've got to hit that perfect if i come up short it's an absolute flat lander from, I don't know, 15 feet up, so I'd probably slip the pedals. It would be a bad story. Same if I overshoot this, it's gonna be a long way down, it'll be a heavy landing, so I've gotta nail it, I've gotta land right in the top of that down slope. Like I say on a hardtail, it's, it's perfect. You can, you can do these things, you just gotta nail it. So you've gotta be confident, and you've gotta try and get the landing right in the sweet spot. Line choice is crucial when it comes to riding a hardtail. What could be the fastest line through a section of trail on a full suspension bike could be quite detrimental when it comes to riding on a hardtail. You're prone to punctures, also could send you off the trail if you're not ready for it. The longest line around a certain section of trail could be the best choice on a hardtail. It's not the fastest, but it'll be the smoothest for you. Now you can see we've got Two different line choices here. You got one that gets used quite a lot. It looks smoother, but then on this side, you can see it's a lot rougher with some big undulations and big step down drops. Now, which one would you choose if you were to ride a hardtail? I think I'd go with this one. Drifting, I think, is one of the best feelings on a bike. And I feel like it's almost better on a hardtail because there's a real relationship between the, the feel you get between your kind of the foot and the bike on the floor and the grip. You can kind of predict it, I think, better than a full suspension bike. I learned this on that dual silent race in the field, like that feeling of bombing down something that's really smooth, really easy, and drifting a bike is still one of the best things ever. So to practice this, I think this is a good example of a good spot, actually. I've kind of got an off-camber turn. It's really tight, it's loose, it's kind of a knuckle. So I know if I just lean the bike over quite a lot on that middle bit, it will slide, oh, I think at least it will. I'll take my foot off, I can do it really safely, really smoothly, slowly even, and get a feel for how the bike drifts, where I need to put my weight on there, and that's really gonna build your cornering confidence. Hey, it kind of works, so I'm actually having to kind of use a bit of back brake into a skid, obviously, and set it a bit sideways just to get it moving. It's a bit harder, the ground, than I thought. And then I'm trying to let off the brake and then sort of go from a skid into a drift. The bunny hop is an essential skill when it comes to riding mountain bikes out there on the trail. Now, unweighting the bike is a more advanced kind of skill to have that brings on the bunny hop skill to a next level. You're probably wondering, what is unweighting? You think, am I supposed to do loads of little bunny hops? No, 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 no. What I mean is you learn off the pressure on your pedals and you're letting the bike skip underneath you. Unweight the bike, don't push down on the bike. Kind of lay off the pressure on the pedals and let the bike skip when it comes to lots of chattery bits. It does definitely smooth out the trail a lot. A bit like on this really steep bit of section of trail right here. We're gonna see Neil come through, unweight himself over this rooty section come onto this little platform right here unweight or bunny hop but it's it's a more advanced one unweight right here so you can traverse right across onto that little down slope over there essentially unweighting yourself on a hardtail is crucial because it kind of lets the wheels skim across most of the rough bits of that trail 
making it a lot smoother for you to ride. Bike park jumps can work really well on the hardtail. It's a bit like the bigger drop off so you've got to be super confident at basically a jumping, which is, you know, pumping to make speed, uh, bunny hops for making height and just getting that extra pop if you need it. You might hit a takeoff and realize you're not going to clear it and that can be pretty hard on a big jump even if it's a table landing on a hard tough case it's going to be a big heavy landing but w bike park is brilliant for this there's some big jumps and really smooth landings but be careful in between jumps as well some bike parks they might be a bit braking bumpy and that can be difficult on flat paddles but as long as they're smooth they can work really well but also let's head over to blake for a bit of dirt jumping advice Right, the next time you go to a dirt jump spot or a skate park for that matter, 99% of people there are riding hardtails. No full suspension going on there because the hardtail is more predictable when it comes to hitting the lip. It gives you more pop and the lack of the rear suspension makes the bike a lot lighter to ride. Now when it comes to riding dirt jumps, uh, they can be quite intimidating with the steep takeoffs and the steep landings. But like anything in life, or when it comes to riding mountain bikes, start off very small. Don't chuck yourself in the deep end. Start small, learn the foundations first, and then gradually get up to a bigger lip, a bigger steeper lip. But the hardtail is the best machine for learning how to jump. Last but not least is going racing. Yeah, I grew up racing a hardtail on the Daniel scene, but that was a long time ago. Blake, you're the you're the man nowadays for riding hardtails on pretty gnarly things. How is it? Really good. Done the Mega, done the EWS. It brings the best out in you. It brings every single skill that we've been talking about in this video to practice. Your line choice, your own way in, your bunny hop, jump in, everything. Yeah, something about racing for me as well, like where you, you're trying to push the absolute limits and like you don't get that. Oh, well, I didn't get that from normal riding. I haven't done that much. What I have done is a dual slide, which I absolutely love. I talked about it before, about drifting corners. And it's so easy to do. Get yourself a field, some cones, a bunch of mates, and you will learn so much about how to ride your bike fast that translates to whatever bike you're on. And it is the most fun ever, so have a go at that. Exactly. So find out some local races near you. Go out and on your hardtail, push your limits, because uh, it will bring out the best in you. Send your hardtails in using the Bike Vault. We'll check them out uh, in the Dirt Shed show. Love seeing a good hardtail. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.